Hello everyone and welcome to the stream during Steam Next Fest. The festival is at full swing and there's a lot of demos you can try out right now on Steam. Among them, a real hidden gem, Infection Free Zone. I'm here with chief designer of Infection Free Zone, Bartek. Hi. And we're going to talk a little bit about the game, about what you can expect. And of course, remember to try out the demo. Construction complete. Broadcasting on all emergency frequencies. We provide food and shelter, safety and security. This is an infection-free zone. Join us. Bartek, where did the idea come from? What was your first inspiration to make infection-free zone? Okay, so that is actually a long story. Because We've got uh, time. we had a, a whole history of development uh, based on the real real maps uh, throughout the uh, history of the studio. So we started with some mobile games um, that, that utilized the idea of, of using real maps. Then we had 911 operator that was a great success and that already had uh, uh, real, real maps and was a PC game. Then there was a sequel called 112 operator. And then in the meantime, we thought, hey, we need something that um, that can get into more details into the street level uh, level gameplay. Uh, and by the way, we uh, we are fans of, of the post apocalyptic worlds for post apocalyptic movies. Uh, so we came up with our own ideas uh, for our setting uh, and for a gameplay. And here we are. Uh, with Infection Free Zone reaching the, the demo festival and the early alpha version that sh some of you might already play. So you mentioned the setting. What's the setting of the game? So you have to tell us more about that. Yes, so the setting is inspired by, uh, by a few um, uh, sources. The most uh, related would be the uh, I Am Legend uh, book. Yeah. Uh, the, the old one and then the movie is also uh, very similar so we have a, a, a war a global pandemic that uh, that infects people but not doesn't does not kill them uh, they become uh, mad they become uh, uh, kind of crazy and very violent uh, we actually prefer to use the word uh, vampires than zombies because just they, like in I Am Legend. Those yes, the, those, those guys are not dead. They are, they are just uh, more animal-like. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the setting and uh, we came up with an idea. Hey, we have to, uh, we want people to feel uh, their own region where they live. Uh, so we wanted to let them stay in the place uh, where they are. So the story tells us about uh, underground shelters where okay. the people hid for a few years and when once their their resources depleted uh, they could came out and rebuild the city uh, so they have to uh, first find the resources rebuild the city and then fight fight the infection or they infected themselves uh, during the night because they they hate sure. the sun 
Okay, so uh, we already know that we don't use the word zombies here, uh, but what is the main difference between an infected and a zombie? You mentioned the day and night cycle. Uh, you mentioned that they uh, they don't die. What else? What in terms of gameplay? What does this mean okay, for so the player? First of all, we want them to be really challenging, uh, and uh, they are. Uh, actually, they are stronger and faster than a human being. Uh, they run faster, they, they bite, uh, they scratch. Uh, they don't infect straight away. Uh, I don't want to go into details because that's actually that's, uh, that's a part of the story as well. Why they don't infect or they infect uh, our survivors. Uh, and uh, well, they don't like the light. They prefer to live in the shadows. They prefer to live underground in some sewers, in some subway, uh, or some just basements uh, mm -hmm. of the building, so they hide during the day. And they, they, once the sun goes down, they go out and attack your, uh, attack your settlement. We'll stay away. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna find some infected animals, because the, let's say the virus mutated, and, uh, and could also infect some, some larger animals, or some dogs, or some birds. Uh, but that's that's not all. Uh, we are going to also encounter some people as as usual, and they might be even a higher threat than uh, than the infected. Okay, so in this lore, all of the Earth has this pandemic, and some years have passed, which is actually quite important with what you said at the beginning that you have experience on real world maps, and from what I know, you can play the game anywhere on the globe. Is that right? Yes, that's the main main aspect of the yeah. game, uh, the main unique selling point, uh, that you can actually uh, select any region that you like. Um, most likely the, the, the place of your origin, because as we noticed, like 90% of the people will choose their own home as their headquarters. And this is actually possible. So you just type in the name of the city, download the map, and then select which building you want your HQ to be in. And that's the start of the game. Okay. That's that's the very uh, beginning um, of uh, of your construction of your exploration of the nearby area. Uh, I'm sure you will be uh, you will be familiar with what's what's nearby. What kind of shops? What kind of schools can, yeah, can for, be? For example, I would start in my parents' hometown, and there's a hospital two blocks away. Yes, yeah, so that's a, that's an impress in, important point of interest uh -huh. to explore. We actually have a list of like 100 of different uh, points of interest, real life uh, uh, types of locations that you can uh, that you can scavenge. So starting with shops, uh, groceries that that can, perhaps you will find some food, then some hospitals, pharmacies uh, that you can find drugs, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, police stations, weapon shops that you can find weapons. Uh, then there are places that you can find vehicles. Uh, cars, uh, perhaps some uh, more sophisticated uh, vehicles or, or tools actually. Uh, then there are places that we can find seeds for farming, uh, some extra tools uh, and so on. There's, there's, the list is quite long mm -hmm. uh, as we have over 20 resources now. Another important one is that actually the, the research points are kind of a resource. You have to find places where you can obtain knowledge like would you know how to build a radio? Probably not. I guess not. Well, you, you usually know how to turn it on, but how to build an antenna? Well, we need some specific technical knowledge. Yeah, I just know it's about waves, but so, you know, I don't know anything else. That's right. And some electricity. And some know. electricity, yeah. Yeah, so this is the point. Like, uh, our survivors have to scavenge the knowledge, mm -hmm. like looking for some libraries, um, schools, universities. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's not all. There will be still uh, some extra events and some randomized content that can happen basically anywhere. Okay, so uh, I've chosen the location I want to start with. And w how does the gameplay start? So let's stick with my parents' house. I'm starting at a house. Two blocks away, there's a hospital. It's a small town in southern Poland. Yes, yeah, so at this stage, this is uh, there is a lot of scripts uh, happening. Uh, so uh, we start with the scavenging of a nearby buildings. We basically look for food, as this is the, the, uh, the primary need of our of our citizens. Uh, then probably you will want to find some weapons. So now it is up to you where you're gonna look for it. Uh, 
-hmm. you can just look for every house every single house and there are basically thousands of house of homes buildings nearby we, mm -hmm. we don't even uh, we don't even notice sometimes that the the closest area and we're talking about about four square kilometers of of an area that we actually uh, have the have to build the zone and there are like five thousand buildings on average five thousand buildings that's a lot mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can scan every single one of them uh, based on their size uh, location uh, height and the, the points of interest so so amenities. Uh, you can find various resources there. Then you rebuild, uh, you adapt the buildings. This is very important mechanics, very unique mechanic uh, in terms of city builders that we don't build the buildings. We adapt existing buildings to our new need. We don't build them from scratch. And how does choosing the location, because this was about buildings and about me building, the, but the infected are there. And does this also affect uh, the starting location? Does this have any influence? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's a huge impact. influence, actually. Uh, we actually divide the whole world in few uh, various uh, types of maps. So uh, let's start with just uh, a complete desolation, desolated places. So uh, if there are only trees, no roads and no buildings, you basically should not play those regions. The, the game will uh, just uh, prompt you to way. tell uh, that this is not the correct place to choose. You cannot start in the middle of a forest. Sir? But you can try. You can try, but there won't be any buildings to scavenge, any, yeah. any buildings to adapt, so that's a problem. Then you have small villages and uh, small towns that are basically perfect for, for, for gameplay. We optimize the gameplay for those regions. Uh, so as long as there are like 100 up to 1000 buildings that's perfect that's usually uh, spread out uh, small buildings that are easy easy to scavenge easy to adapt easy to find a place that you ca that you might want to surround with walls uh, and defend later mm -hmm. on uh, then there are the big cities the, the, the downtown of uh, like uh, let's say Manhattan uh, New York and this will be too dense location too many high buildings, there, there, there will be too many infected. Uh, you, the cost of adapting the buildings would be too high, the scavenging too long. So we actually um, will disencourage people to, uh, to try those locations. Uh, but they will be playable. Uh, it will be just very hard. Ultra, ultra hard mode. Yes, so you will be again prompted to say, are you sure you want to play this location? This will be a very hard location. From what I see players doing with other games all over the world there will be some people who will try that definitely and you might be surprised of course, of course i'm sure that those will be the most dedicated players that <laughs> will play those regions and will prove us that that the level difficulty level is still too low if there's a real apocalypse happening you have to know such person just in case <laughs> well uh, then you're talking about the the preppers uh, okay this is also a thing in the game that you can always meet, meet them if you know where to look okay uh, but let's not go into the subject coming yeah. back to the, the large cities actually uh, well if you're um, well, well aware of all the game mechanics well the big cities might be um, a good place to start if you know when, where to scavenge what to scavenge how to manage your squads so they uh, uh, so they actually bring you something interesting. Okay, that's great. And if you were to tell us uh, more again uh, about the gameplay, but like the genre of the game, because it's survival, it's city building, but it's also RTS because the combat is real time, right? Um, yes, so most of the times we call it a city builder or to mm -hmm. be more exact city rebuilder. Okay, the cities are already yeah. there. What we have to do is uh, is, is adapt the buildings uh, back to their uh, well to something useful. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is this is one thing that that usually happens during the day. But during the night, it's mostly a, a base base defense, or a, okay. some might call it a tower defense game. Uh, so it's a mix of two genres, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, uh, we have those real maps uh, that put you. Uh, in a very certain place that you uh, that you know. Okay, and uh, you mentioned that the area your zone is is four square miles. 
And how long is the gameplay? Is it open-ended? Is there any goals to achieve and the game ends? Or is it just a mm -hmm. playful sandbox for you to, to test your survival skills so, in? Mm, the default mode is, uh, is the story mode. Uh, so you actually follow a story of, of, of those people that you take care of. Um, and uh, all the encounters uh, that they're gonna have, there are few various groups that, that you're gonna meet that they will have their own dilemmas. Uh, one uh, very important mechanics uh, that have roots in our previous games are the calls. Once you build a large antenna, you can both transmit and receive transmissions from outside, uh, from, uh, well, from distant locations also. Uh, and well, there will be various people calling you. Some uh, some crazy people were few years after the apocalypse. So, uh, well, normal is a uh, well, or crazy is a new normal. Uh, and uh, well, they're gonna have some offers for you. They're gonna have some uh, threats for you. Uh, perhaps they will just want to talk, or they will have some quest for you to comp uh, accomplish. Uh, and this is the basic mode, so you follow this story, you go deeper and deeper uh, into the rabbit hole, uh, you can check out, find out what caused the, the infection, what, uh, uh, what happened to other survivors. Uh, and after a few hours you will reach a point uh, when the story well, is mostly over, mm -hmm. but there are still some uh, uh, generic content that uh, that can happen, new encounters, and uh, well, there is no direct end to it. So there's like like an endless mode, and you can try your yes. Skills. So uh, you we start with those four square kilometers. The, yeah, uh, does it expand? Uh, uh, well, you cannot expand your zone, your primary zone ex uh, outside of it, but you can send your squads to expeditions. Okay, and they can go pretty far away, like. Uh, up to 50 okay. kilometers away, as long as you have fuel and you have um, uh, radio range. So that depends on the size of the antenna uh, and the technology you're so using. So again, it's good to know how to construct the radio. Yes, We're yes going that's back crucial. To that. uh, actually, it, it happens after about one hour uh, of gameplay. Uh -huh. uh, that varies from moment to moment, from player to player. But once you build an antenna, you will be able to send, uh, to receive and, 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 and send transmissions and then uh, send your squads to expeditions and reach out some uh, more distant points of interest, like, for, for example, some military bases, airports uh, and uh, many, many other places that you know that are more uh, distant than... Uh, They're also those. based on the real world? Or? Of course, yes. yes. Uh, then there will be some randomized uh, locations. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is basically randomized. This is one of the very difficult challenges about this game, but let's not go into that right oh, now. Oh, we will. Of course. Uh, so now uh, we have to know uh, where there are the airports, the military bases, some government buildings, some universities and so. Um, and those are real life locations. Usually we will uh, force the game to spawn an event on those locations. Most games have design maps or levels. Even if something is randomly generated, there are some rule sets behind this. But you have a third approach. You have real life maps. It's neither designed nor completely random. Uh, how do you balance a game like that? So this is kind of a rocket science in terms of, of, of uh, game design. Uh, because we never know what the player is going to play on. Like, uh, we can uh, predict that how the cities looks like, but actually the cities vary a lot from region to region. Like, there are some very dense cities that, that there are buildings next to buildings. Some that are very loose locations, like, like single uh, houses uh, on, a single, on the single road. Uh, and we never know what player is going to choose. We can analyze that, uh, but... Uh, we don't design maps, okay. yeah. like we design so. gameplay. So um, uh, this is uh, for pro and pros and cons. So some people will find it entertaining, some people might find it boring. And I have to admit that, that it might be boring because, uh, well, some cities are not really interesting. There are many, many uh, similar buildings right next to each other. And uh, sometimes people might find out that they're home location is not the best location to play. 
And I have to admit that this is one of the the uh, the issues that players gonna meet. That maybe they want to play in different location. Perhaps they they wanna share the best locations to play, like a very desolate location that are good for defense, or some. Uh, locations that are very good for scavenging, that there are many locations that they can uh, look for resources, uh, or many other uh, many different aspects, like sometimes a single tower uh, in the middle of a town, like a skyscraper, uh, can be a good location to put a squad there because they have a, a bonus, uh, uh, well, in view range, yeah. so they will see more. Uh, and there are many, many more of those. Like the, we don't know where the river is gonna be, and the river are a natural, river. natural obstacle. The infected can swim, so they want uh, the, the this. The, you cannot find a location that is perfectly safe. Uh, but uh, again, they, they, of course, they go slower. Uh, so um, this goes both ways. Your squads don't swim very well. At least they don't scavenge or bring the resources very well through mm -hmm. the water. So you have to choose a location that is desolate, but not so much desolate, desolate that there are no bridges. So for example, a small island, it's not even directly playable because, well, you cannot go away from, mm. that, from that region. You will soon run out of uh, uh, places to scavenge. You will run out of resources. Like one of the most important resources are wood and bricks. And well, most of the time you just get wood from cutting down trees or deconstructing buildings uh, because we both adapt buildings and we deconstruct the buildings to acquire bricks and acquire wood. That depends on the location because, well, American cities uh, or towns, are there are many houses built from wood, yeah. while in Europe most of the most of the buildings are built from uh, from bricks, mm -hmm. and we actually uh, will differ those two and um, and provide different resources. And then if you have wood, you build palisades. If you have bricks, you build walls that are a bit more um, hard and sturdy and, durable. and, and they they durable. Uh, then they provide some better protection. Then there is metal that you basically uh, mm, collect either from uh, uh, just wreckages of cars or some street lamps or also by deconstructing the buildings. Well, we don't build mines. This is not the times where we can afford to build deep mines for coal mm. or for metal, for steel. So we, uh, we focus on, uh, on scavenging. But coming back to your question, like, we don't design maps. We don't know what people are gonna play. We have to operate uh, like from behind the curtain, without knowing what what the player is gonna play like, because we have hundreds of thousands of locations that people can play. We know that from our previous games, from 911 and 112 operator, that there were 100,000 different cities that people downloaded and played. And right now there will be even more because we, in those games people only played cities and now we can play towns, small villages and uh, some uh, rural uh, areas. But on the other hand we have those recommended locations. There will be like 10 uh, locations that are recommended for players. Okay. And uh, those will be optimized for the best experience. Like uh, we we make sure that those uh, they are interesting locations that uh, the architecture is uh, is different from each other. Those are locations from various countries. So there are a few from uh, United States. There are, there is at least one from Germany, France, UK, uh, from China. Uh, there will be one from Poland, I guess. Uh, and the rest are not are undecided yet. Uh, perhaps. Maybe our viewers would like to propose something. You can do it in the chat right now. I mean, the demo is here for for uh, started like on Monday. You could download the demo, so I think there will be many recommendations for you after. Yeah, well, I played. guess yeah, I guess you already played that, so uh, yeah, so leave the uh, the the, uh, the recommendations. Uh, right now, the demo provides only four. Uh, recommended locations. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't allow uh, to download any location in the demo. This one is disabled because of well the server infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, and basically that, that this is still work in progress. And you would encounter too many errors. 
Okay. And uh, this is another subject that we have to address now that uh, there are so many different kind of problems that we can encounter with those any locations that uh, that that can be played uh, that we have to be careful about what we give give out um, because uh, in many cases you will encounter locations that you would encounter locations for example that are unreachable because the buildings are so close that the squads cannot uh, get there they are basically wrongly mapped uh, regions uh, that uh, someone placed a gig gigantic building that does not exist because it's underground but it's uh, but there are errors in maps uh, and that we cannot verify if it's a real error or not or somebody just uh, just entered um, a wrong building into the maps and we have to uh, be careful about those uh, what kind of maps people download or what maps are provided by OpenStreetMap, which is an open database. Yes. Everyone can go to OpenStreetMap's uh, database and, uh, and edit their locations. So please don't do that because uh, uh, actually we, anyway, we have our own copy of those of that data and editing OpenStreetMaps won't change the maps in the game. And this is by, by purpose uh, because we don't want people to mess OpenStreetMaps data for their gaming purposes. Yes. And for that we're gonna have a map editor in, included in the in the game so you can edit the maps on your own inside of the game. So uh, modify the buildings, uh, add the data that is unavailable uh, or uh, just the data that is missing. Okay. And then, then there is one uh, biggest issue about working with real maps that some regions are basically unmapped. There are very few regions like that, uh, at least in Eastern Europe, uh, basically none in, uh, in, in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few locations that we notice in Canada or in Australia. And there will be, um, uh, there will be also uh, some other sources of data that will help us with uh, some Asian regions like, uh, like Hong Kong, uh, China, uh, because those have very specific architecture, very tall buildings, very narrow buildings also, uh, and a lot of missing data. Mm. We are still working on it, uh, and this is why we couldn't uh, provide uh, a, a, any region to the wider audience. So please stay tuned uh, for for the early access release when uh, we will allow to play um, any region. But still, please keep in mind that there might be er errors uh, that we are still working on every single issue, and we are gonna work for the, uh, on that for many months, yeah, at I least a year in early access until we we can tell that hey, you can download any maps, including any mountain location, because actually terrain elevation. Uh, is also a thing that we are working on now. Okay. There are aspects of, of the, the, all the rivers, all the water areas, there are aspects of electricity, there are aspects of, um, of uh, undergrounds like tunnels, like uh, subway that we s wa at least want to address mm -hmm. um, because those underground areas won't be available but uh, they will have some influence on the gameplay. Okay. And of course, the community, when the game is out, will probably have something to say and help you because you have a whole world to play test, which is impossible. Oh, yes. So, fingers crossed. But you said that in the demo we have four locations right now, but from playing the game, is there a, your favorite location? Like, a personal question. Well, I, I, I'm, I act just like any player would do, so I download my hometown, <laughs> from my very hometown uh, of, of Radom, Poland. Uh, that is apparently very well mapped, uh, and I can choose my, my very uh, home... Uh, home house? <laughs> uh, my, I home. choose my very home to, as a starting location and then spread, and I know every single neighborhood, uh, house, uh, who lives there, what he did. Uh, and this is the level of immersion that, that we provide and everyone experiences. So he basically chose this building and he knows where to look for things. Okay, you can see the street names, you can see the buildings, you usually you can see uh, what their purpose was. Perhaps you want, to, you want to play with that, perhaps you want to get yourself into another level of immersion. Uh, like being in this post-apocalyptic world yourself uh, with the very location that uh, that you live and you know. 
So you have a world, a whole world at your disposal, and there's a lot of encounters, things to do in the game. Uh, so how is the replayability of the game? Yeah, well, uh, so um, we talk about the story previously, so that you ex uh, that you uh, experience uh, a story from this perspective of those people that came out from a from a shelter, and they explore the the, the surrounding. They explore who survived, they meet other survivors, they they transmit uh, or receive transmission, they explore further and further away. So once you reach a, a certain point in this story, uh, you will uh, be able to well, start from scratch, let's say send a new settlers mm -hmm. that will start another, uh, another uh, infection-free zone, basically. So, um, and this is a different kind of starting the game. Uh, you choose another location, uh, once again you start from scratch from very single location, a very limited number of people, and you rebuild the, the town again, you fight the infected, uh, and uh, reach a certain point where perhaps you want to move further and further away. So we don't only rebuild a single city, we rebuild an entire civilization, let's say. Uh, well, those will be separate gameplays, so you do not connect with this your mm -hmm. your place of origin, uh, and you don't even you're not even forced to choose um, a nearby location. You can choose any place in the world again. So perhaps you players will recommend the the, the regions uh, for in between each other, recommending where where to, what is a good place to defend, what is a good place to scavenge, what is mm -hmm. a good place to. Um, uh, for spotting what is a good place for research, uh, and then try a few different maps and how you how you're gonna live and build there. So for people who are about to start the demo after our stream right now, any tips for new players who launch the game for the first time? Mm, well, there is a few things that might be uh, untypical. Uh, for for the games like this, we try the, that we, we want to make sure that everyone who play other city builders find themselves around. But there is uh, a one well distinctive thing about this uh, this game that there is a city builder, some pretty classic city builder stuff, building, uh, constructing, uh, bringing resources. But there are also squads. Those are two separate okay. things that we actually divide all our citizens into those two groups so workers and squad members because the squads are the fighting group mm -hmm. uh, fighting groups uh, the, the groups of four people that you can manage directly okay. we actually t say that they have a radio you can con contact them directly while the workers don't they have to come back and be given some orders by the, 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 the citizens manager you don't control them directly in this case they they have their work shifts they they go and back and forth but the squads have to be managed by the player uh, himself uh, he can give them uh, the, the, the some order cues tell them to fight a certain group or scavenge a certain building those guys can also jump into some vehicles once they find them and and make them work again because well after those years uh, after the apocalypse uh, well all the cars without maintenance well are not so drivable straight away mm -hmm. so they have to uh, let's say uh, repair the the wheels uh, make sure that there is fuel yeah fuel. that they can start this vehicle mm -hmm. but once they do so this is a huge advantage uh, once they they find this vehicle because they can travel faster uh, they can bring more resources and they can uh, run over the infected uh, if you man micromanage them carefully and, and tell them how they uh, should do it but there are well, consequences to that the vehicles should only drive by, by roads and this is important they cannot go off-road they, they yeah. will be much s slower and they need fuel once you run out of fuel you basically have to push the car <laughs> so it, it moves very slowly even slower than a, than, than a walking squad uh, but usually it's a huge advantage and uh, once you have those vehicles you can also go uh, much more efficiently on those expeditions mm -hmm. further away from the zone. And this is pretty unique uh, that, that once you find those vehicles uh, you can use them and you can uh, fight with them, uh, fight using the vehicles 
and run over the, the infected. But uh, well, coming back to your question, uh, what tips are there? So make sure you know how to navigate the squads. Just right click on this, uh, uh, just left click on the squad and then right click to tell them where to go. And apart from that, they will know what to do. Once they scavenge mm. a building, they will bring the resources back. But sometimes if their inventory is not full, they will prefer to stay in the, uh, in the building because uh, fighting from the building is also a huge advantage like they basically shoot from the windows yeah uh, all the incoming infected uh, so this is a, a huge boost to, to their defense because uh, well then uh, if you happen to find some infected in the house and there is a, like one percentage uh, one percent chance of you finding an infected while once you scam mm -hmm. Um, but once you do, they will be in huge trouble and you will have just a few seconds to react and, and decide if they should keep fighting or, or evacuate. Okay. Yeah, so uh, those squad management and workers management is an important factor and an important aspect of the game. And people have sometimes some difficulties finding their way around, mm -hmm. uh, managing the, both the squads. And how the many workers. people do you manage in the game? We mentioned the size of the game, but mm -hmm. how large can can so your by default you start be? with we start with forty people, uh, and you can make up to five squads of four people, and then there is a squad limit. Let's say uh, we tell that uh, this is how much how many radius you can you you have yeah. and how many people you can uh, manage. Uh, we actually experimented with uh, with uh, putting all the people in the squads and managing them manually. Mm -hmm. But also by uh, as design, the squads don't construct, they don't do uh, labor in the buildings, they don't produce, mm -hmm. they just go scavenge and fight. So they have professionalizations. Um, and the so workers? And how many workers can you well, have? All the rest are the workers. Okay. <laughs> all the rest, guys. Uh, because, well, th there's a single resource of people that okay. you can you have to choose. But then there's a limitation about the weapons. Uh, at least in European uh, cities, the, uh, uh, the weapons are not so easily uh, obtainable. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will be rather a limit. So how many weapons you have? Uh, because if you don't have many... Uh, enough weapons you will have to use just uh, uh, blunt uh, melee weapons so machetes mm -hmm. uh, and this this is efficient but not so much like a squad of four people maybe can defeat a group of 10 infected and this will be good by default uh, as designed those infected are supposed to be very dangerous fast mm -hmm. faster than human and uh, more aggressive than human so you start with 40 people then there will be people joining your uh, mm -hmm. your zone uh, once you invite them or once you encounter them with your squads uh, well usually you will want to accept them to your group but you have to be careful about the moods and about the resources if you can feed them because if you cannot feed them all uh, well all of them will be uh, well disencouraged mm -hmm. and uh, well this will be actually uh, a, a disadvantage to you so uh, we want uh, the, the zones to grow as large as like 500 people, maybe even 1000 people. Uh, but well, well, it's not so large. The, the cities that we live in are like... I know, but the, like after the apocalypse, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, those few hundred people should be uh, the, the limit. Mm -hmm. And actually, once you reach that, the, you will encounter some extra problems with the moods and... Uh, well, uh, how the people feel. So this will be a kind of a limit. Mm -hmm. um, you won't be able to grow larger, but you can always start from scratch and send people away uh, to build a new zone. Yeah, like a settlement yeah, expedition. Yeah, so, so this is uh, this is a kind of a, a continuation of yeah. the gameplay uh, and starting anew. And uh, well, what's next? What are the future holds? What are the next steps? Uh, ahead of the team yeah, so and what can players expect from you so soon? where are we uh, so right now it's a pre-alpha well it's 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 quite uh, extended pre-alpha it's already playable and then presentable there are many people uh, that received early access all the kickstarters and um, and uh, extra backers 
uh, and many YouTubers that receive the access. Let's ca so let's call them uh, alpha testers that are mm -hmm. already checking the, the 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 basic features of the game. Uh, so we are already uh, at the stage where you can build the zone, build the walls, uh, received a few different transmissions uh, uh, where you can manage the squads and uh, construct and adapt. Uh, there are a number of uh, features that are under development at this very moment, so that's uh, partial adaptation. This is actually important because we s adapt the building from like 100 square meters up to tens of thousands square or cubic meters because well the, the yeah, height also matters uh, and now we implemented the partial adaptation you can select how much of this building you want to adapt previously it was impossible we, we yeah. selected a whole building or not uh, so this is under development then the ex exchange system is under development so squads can uh, exchange um, their inventory without going back to the head HQ yeah. or um, uh, they can uh, just uh, change the, the inventory or drop things then the expedition system the large system uh, that allows you to travel further and further away uh, is also under development right now there is a huge aspect that was already prototyped that's terrain elevation so mm -hmm. all the uh, all the walls all the towers all the uh, mountains hills and then uh, rivers and uh, and sea level uh, is uh, also under development but we already have the weather system that is a huge aspect again you might not notice this not so obvious but the infected hate the sun not the day so they if there there is a lot of clouds they came uh, they go out during the and day also if, if it's cloudy enough so sometimes you might be attacked during the day as well uh, and you can also be attacked by other groups of, of survivors uh, yes. we call them um, rebels or bandits and this is even bigger threat because they have uh, they have guns they mm. have uh, they have arms uh, sometimes they also have vehicles uh, well, some of those uh, groups will also help you uh, or, or trade with you and this is another aspect that is still under development so at this stage we are at like 10 calls implemented in the game we want to have like 30 or 50 transmissions and there are like hundreds of events that can happen what you encounter what you find uh, what kind of um, quests you're gonna have and uh, objectives uh, that you have to complete. Okay, uh, we have some questions from the community I'd like to ask you. You mentioned how important other players are when they can give you tips where to start the game, but do you plan up on any multiplayer mode? I would love to, but this is uh, out of consideration now. There won't be any multiplayer uh, any kind, so all we can do is compete and then tell ourselves how far did we reach on this single location um, and uh, you also said about I am legend as an inspiration but our community wants to know uh, what games inspired infection free zone yeah so uh, we first of all uh, look at other city builders uh, and the biggest one are the most important so we'll starting with uh, there are billions then there is frostpunk there is banished mm -hmm. uh, also there is a game called timberborn that's a, a really nice city builder with with, with a lot of crafting and, and uh, terrain modification uh, we still look what's what's popular uh, well manor lords was recently a huge yeah. inspiration there was a demo at the previous festival uh, that we also take a close look how they solve things. But still, uh, Infection Free Zone is much different than that, but starting with those uh, any real maps playable with the squad management or just the vehicles themselves that are also very unpopular uh, aspect of, 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 of this kind of games. Another question we got, so we've got the experience with 911 operator. Are these games anyway connected? Uh, Apparently yes, like it's not obvious how they are connected, actually it's more of an easter egg uh, that we already uh, spoiled because uh, 
well, uh, who played 112 Operator and played the last DLC that is called The Last Duty, it's actually about uh, a start of a pandemic of a kind of uh, uh, well, where the infection starts and mm -hmm. there are people attacked uh, by the infected, basically beaten down uh, and killed. And you play until the, the whole world fails and, and you fail, you have to fail. And then we have this uh, intro to Infection Freezone that says um, that uh, people uh, hid underground and stayed in shelters mm -hmm. uh, until the things go quiet uh, outside. And uh, actually they are connected, like uh, uh, some of you might notice that the m main voice actor is the same, that's uh, Ian. Uh, are were close uh, and very important part of, of the team uh, that plays the same role. So there is a bit of a backstory for him that he is qualified to be the operator uh, and to actually manage the squads and manage the, the zone. Uh, so this is this kind of lore that we have uh, about our, uh, our zone. But to be honest, we have to adapt the game and the story to every single location in the entire world. So we tried this story to be kind of generic, not going to many details that are specific for any culture um, on the world. So we tried this to make an universal story that could happen anywhere in the world. And you can feel uh, that, yes, it was possible. It is possible uh, in my location. Okay, I'm watching the gameplay right now. And could you tell us what's happening right now on the screen? Uh, yeah, so this is actually something that we call swarm attack. Uh, so there is a large number of uh, infected hordes that uh, that are attacking the zone. This happens once every uh, every few days. Uh, I won't tell when exactly, but it starts with a, a loud howl by the infected, uh, and they attack you with uh, with uh, well more violence than than usual. So uh, if you survive this, uh, this will be an achievement. Uh, you have to prepare for this because this will happen. Once you send the squads to expeditions, they can uh, actually find the swarms gathering and you can know uh, with a with few days advantage that they will come and well okay. to allow yourself to prepare. Uh, but once they do and you're unprepared, they will overwhelm you surely. Okay. Uh, maybe you can notice that there are also some infected dogs around. Uh -huh. This is not the only type, type of infected. Sometimes there might be other animals uh, like like bears or moose uh, or a few others. Uh, that there will be infected bears as well. But those have uh, usually they, they don't mix. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they attack uh, on separate uh, on separate times on separate occasions. Uh, and they all are a different challenge, like uh, the birds, uh, well, cannot be killed with melee weapons, they are too fast, they, they run away, and they mostly attack your farms. Mm -hmm. The beers basically cannot be run by vehicles, they are too big, the, the vehicle will be damaged if you do so, uh, and they're basically a tank that you're gonna need a lot of ammo, but they are slow. They are infected humans, they are uh, bandits, they are not infected, and there is one special type of infected that will be well revealed later on a surprise and let's let's say it's a surprise it's not a typical tank or, or anything like it it's more of a uh, of a uh, let's say one specific mutation that uh, okay. that uh, provides a special challenge okay uh, and the last question from the community can you cure the infected Oh, that's a difficult question. Actually, I, I would prefer not to answer that because, okay. well, the, I don't want to spoil the story. Uh, but uh, coming back to the first question, like why infected not the zombies? They are not zombies. Those are not dead people. They are not rotting. Those are just, let's say, like dogs with uh, rabies virus. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are just crazy, mad. They hate, uh, they hate sun. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be possible to cure them. So thank you very much for listening uh, and be sure to check out Infection Free Zone. The demo is available right now on Steam Next Fest and have a blast. Goodbye.
See ya.